Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. You may have heard the term prana suckers. These are people who drain our energies. We were all given a certain amount of loaned energy when we entered the cosmos of cause and effect and space and time. But since then, many of us have lost a lot of that energy. And every day we are challenged and may give energies at places and situations we would never imagine. And in this video, I want to show an area where we are giving energy away in a very big way if we are not careful. It is our crazy fascination with stars, idols, leaders and celebrities in politics, movies, sport, music and even in religion and spirituality. As fans, we follow them on Twitter and other social media, watch their shows, their games and love to read and hear about them and many dream of actually meeting their hero one day in person or even becoming like them. This all sounds relatively harmless, but it is not. We are speaking of an energy drain of immense proportion. Let's firstly look at what is missing in our life that feeds our huge hunger and infatuation with such media personalities and leaders. It is often loneliness, powerlessness and lack of self-worth. It is our ego telling us that we are not good enough, not as perfect as others. Our ego loves comparing ourselves with others because it usually leads to unhappiness, depressions or low self-esteem, hopelessness and so on. It is the ideal situation for our ego to manipulate us and also for any negative forces to influence us. So to make us feel better, we cheer those who we are in awe of, our idols, our stars, our leaders, and in our desire to rub shoulders with our idol, being part of their glory and success, we eagerly and willingly give the little load energy that we still have left over to them. We all know the cheering crowds at rockstar events. A massive wave of energy comes from the fans and is given to the person on stage. This is a huge energy exchange or shift of energy from thousands of people to a single person or a small group of people who feed on it. We have the same in politics. Remember the famous Nazi greeting in Germany? Raising their right arm towards their leader, millions shouted Heil at the name of the leader. This Heil was a kind of intense blessing or blast of energy from the masses towards one single human being. The result was that this bestowed immense energy volume strengthened him so much that he felt emboldened to committing the most horrendous crimes in history. But politicians of today also know only too well how to play the masses and milk them for their energies and adulations. And so do sport idols, religious leaders and also new age leaders. Loud cheering and chanting are powerful jolts of energy that many celebrities have become totally dependent on just like a drug. Many people don't know that the soul of such an idol who has taken all these energies from so many others will eventually have to return these energies back to them. Every ounce. That is the law. In the end we all have to return any energy that we stole or manipulated from others. Any prana sucker will sooner or later learn that difficult lesson. But there is something more sinister at play whenever we put another person or group of people above us. Let's say this here is us. And here is the one who we admire, idolize or worship. This can be a famous person, but also a whole group of people, like a race, a nationality, a religion, a political ideology or whatever it is that we are in awe of and think is better than anyone else. What do we do? We put them on a pedestal. Here. But if our sense of inferiority and loneliness drives us to be infatuated by another person, a group of people and so on, then our sense of superiority will instantly find other people, ideas, race and anyone who we think are less worth than we are to create a false sense of equilibrium and to make us feel better again. Therefore, we put them below us here. Do we see how distorted this looks? This is one of the causes of racism. Like in the earlier example, to justify their Aryan race idol worship, the Nazis needed a group of other people who they could look down on and thought were less worthy than themselves. 
and we all know how that story ended. This is why a whole group of people like refugees, emigrants, foreigners, people of opposite political beliefs, sexual orientation and others are regarded as less worth by people who think they are superior to them. They do this so that they can feel better about themselves in their loneliness, hopelessness, powerlessness or distorted self-righteousness. We also have this in sports, where there always has to be a lesser team, the losing team, for the fans of the winning team to feel good and superior about themselves. The same in religions, as we know all the religious wars were fought against believers who were considered less worth or heretic. The same is in any other field. I speak about this in my video, Why Do We Kill? As long as we are caught up in the judgment that we, or our team, our group, is better than somebody else, we are in our ego and give away our energy. We can ask ourselves, would God or love do that? Would God have favorites? Think about that for a moment. Would God cheer for one group of people and not for the other group? Not the God I know. The God I know loves every child, every soul, every human being equally. He does not have any preference even for somebody who calls himself Pope, Rabbi, President or World Healer. They are all his children and his love is equal and unlimited. We are all brothers and sisters and in this total equality lies the freedom, the love, the unity and harmony. So a balanced person or a spiritually aware person would also not put another person or group of people above himself and neither below himself. For him, everybody is his or her divine brother or sister of God. And the same applies to the mineral kingdom, the plants and the animals. Everything is divine. He would not prefer one animal and reject another. They are all his little brothers and sisters. Furthermore, any evolved person also does not want devotion, adoration or admiration. They will quickly pass any such praise on to God. But what about a person whose noble qualities, brave deeds, talent and skill we truly admire? I have explained that in greater details in my video on the law of projection. Anything that we admire in another person is an emotional charge that tells us that we have the same quality or potential in us. We are projecting our own qualities onto the other, which may be dormant in us at the moment. And if these are good and lawful qualities, our admiration is nothing but an invitation to also develop these qualities in us as well. So the other person can inspire us to grow and to develop the same qualities or skills. And of course, the same applies to this guy here. Anyone who our ego thinks is less than us is merely reflecting back to us our own unloved aspects. So that both are our mirrors and our teachers. Furthermore, any animosity against a certain group or person creates a vibrational bond that could eventually pull our soul back and reincarnate in exactly that group of people we despise so much in this life. The law of attraction in action. So I invite us to think about if we are still putting people or a group of people on a pedestal. Why are we doing this? What is lacking in our life? And what are they reflecting back to us? And are there other groups of people or people whom we are looking down on? We may have never given this matter much thought, but now we know better. Do we still want to continue with this imbalance? What does our heart say? I will leave you with these thoughts and I'm looking forward to see you in my next video. Music